Welcome back. In this lesson, we're continuing on chapter 12. And remember this photo from the last tutorial. And I said to myself, well, what can I do to push that a little bit further? And as I talked about in the workflow, sometimes you want to add an S curve. What's an S curve? Well, let me show you. You'll have to go into the enhancement. Well, excuse me, first, I like to create a stamped layer. Sorry. So I control alt shift E. Now, every time you create a stamped layer, it does add to the file size. So I want to let you know that, okay? Um, that's just something that I do. And then I go to the enhance, adjust lighting, no, adjust color, sorry. And I'll go over here to adjust color curves. And you'll notice how Photoshop sets this up. First fix the lighting, then fix the color. So it's giving you a nice hint. So it's really great. So color, adjust color curves. And this will open up the color curves dialog box here. And this is little curve, or, well, you just see this in Photoshop. Curves allows you to place 14 points um, to adjust the um, highlight shadows and midtones in more precise ways than if you use levels. Levels only provide you three, remember? Highlight shadow and midtone. So you can be more precise in curves. It's great for restoration work, by the way. But basically, what you would do is you just select these defaults and you see which one you like. Here's the default we started out with. And then you can further customize it by adjusting the highlights, the brightness, and the contrast. So let me choose increase contrast. You can see this is my typical S curve that you'll hear about. The S curve increases the contrast in the middle and still protects your highlights and shadows. And you can move these around if you want. Okay, not so dramatically. And then you click OK. If you want, you can reset. And you're probably saying, well, Chris, this looks a little over the top. I don't think this 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 did a little too much increasing contrast. You're right. I would agree with you. But what I can do is I can go over to layers panel and reduce the opacity and bring it back a little, maybe about 55. And then click my eyeball and see the before and the after, before and after. And I just think that looks a little bit better. Okay? So now let's go look at the other photo here that I have. Remember the photo of the snow that we were correcting? Now what could I do to this photo? I was thinking I could probably add curves to it and increase, you know, I was like, yeah, let me try something else. So I went to the enhance menu and I said, well, let me go to adjust color. Oh, excuse me. Let me go to convert black and white. And I was thinking this would be interesting. This will bring up the convert to black and white dialog box. And again, you'll see familiarity here, but there's a little bit difference. You have your default settings you can select from, which is nice. And then you can work on your um, red, green, or blue channels to further customize what this will look like and can play around with the contrast. So let's select newspaper and maybe I want to increase the contrast a little to make it more black and white. Then click OK and again you can re reset or undo, redo. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. And this looks nice, but again, reduce the opacity and you can take off some of that harshness. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could even make a mask and paint in the effects of where you would want that to happen. So it doesn't limit you. 